leader, this is the MTN 530 News. I'm Brandon Warren, and coming up, we'll talk more about trails in the Billings area. I'm Jonathan Amberian in Helena. I'll have a breakdown of some early data about how many Montanans are making use of a program intended to encourage people to return to work. But we begin with an update on a story we first told you about last night at 10, one man dead after a fire at the Casa Village Mobile Home Park. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Riesinger. The Billings fire investigators were back on the scene again today of a house fire in Casa Village that left a man dead. Q2 Shaquille Cozart heard from desperate residents who noticed that fire yesterday evening in their own backyard. Billings firefighters responded to a home fire at the home behind me at the Casa Village mobile home park near Monad Road, where one man was pronounced dead. The neighbor of the victim said they tried to pull him from the home, but it was too late. According to police, the fire started Wednesday at around 6.30 p.m. The victim, who has not yet been identified, was on the exterior porch of the home when neighbors attempted to pull him from the blaze. One nearby resident who witnessed the fire said that the flames were huge, and he noticed a quick response from police and rescue teams. We saw one fire. We saw one ambulance pull up, and my brother said, there's a, there's a trailer on fire here. And then I walk, and I, I look out the front door just right here, and I thought, I would just seen some huge, pretty decent sized flames coming up off it. And there's, I think, three fire trucks and they came within. I mean, we saw the flames and I think they were here within five minutes, probably. The Billings Fire Department has not yet released a cause for the fire. Reporting in Billings, I'm Shaquille Cozart with MTN News. And again, the name of the victim has not been released. No one else was injured in that fire. Well, smoke drifting in from various wildfires in Montana, making the skies not only hazy at times, but also could be impacting your health. Bad air quality can affect those with pre-existing medical conditions. And if you have a condition like asthma, it's important to have your inhaler handy. You may also want to change or clean the filters on your AC unit or consider buying an air cleaner to further reduce risk. One Billings doctor says you should also try and limit it your time outside if possible. It's difficult for folks who have to be outside. I think probably some advice is to take breaks, lots of breaks, keep yourself really well hydrated, pay attention to yourself. If you're starting to feel lightheaded or you can't breathe well or you're wheezing, it's time to go get checked for those things. And that's honestly what I encourage a lot of folks to do. If you're having a lot of issues with cough and shortness of breath, go see your doctor and have a discussion with them about what they can do to help with that. Now, Peterson says it's important to keep an eye on air quality if you're going to be outside for long periods of time. Now turning to the Weather Center and Chief Meteorologist Ed McIntosh and Ed, smoke's not the only thing in the air right now. That's right. We have some thunderstorm activity which could lead to more wildfires across the region. You can see it's starting to give up a little bit here as we start looking into northern Wyoming with still some active storms here into the Red Lodge foothills. But as we move just a little bit north, take a look around Billings. All of that showing up on radar is smoke. There's enough around now that it's starting to actually reflect back off the weather radar and show up. In fact, you can see it statewide from Great Falls, Glasgow, right on over towards the Billings area. And that's starting to bring a bit more of that smoke closer to the surface as well. You can see much of the state right now with at least some smoke in the yellow shaded areas, and it's been moving up into the unhealthy category from time to time as well. we'll take a closer look at the forecast details in a little bit. A missing endangered person advisory has been issued for a woman who was last seen in Billings on July 4th. 31-year-old Morgan Russell is described as white, 5 feet 6 inches tall and 130 pounds. She has blue eyes and black hair and was last seen wearing a white t-shirt under a black t-shirt with an MCM logo on it. Russell was also carrying a gray and black purse at the time. She's reportedly not kept scheduled appointments or contacted family and there is concern for her well-being. Anyone with information about Russell is asked to call 911. Well, back in May, Governor Greg Gianforte's administration announced plans for return to work bonuses, $1,200 payments to encourage people back into the labor force. Now we're learning just how many people are using that program. MTN's Jonathan Amberian has more. The return to work payments were made available to about 22,000 Montanans who were receiving unemployment benefits as of May 4th. If they take a job and continue working there for at least four weeks, they'll be eligible for the $1,200 payment. 
The Montana Department of Labor and Industry released data on the project through last Friday, July 9th. The department has received just over 3,200 applications for return-to-work payments. 21 applications have been approved, and $21,600 have been dispersed. 29 applications have been rejected. DLI says at this time there's no data available on why those applicants didn't qualify. Most of the applications are still being processed. Employers across Montana have reported challenges in finding workers. The bonus program is intended to give people an incentive to re-enter the labor force, in conjunction with the state's decision to end supplementary pandemic-related unemployment benefits. Representative Lou Jones, a Republican from Conrad, says he didn't expect many applications for the bonuses until after those changes to benefits took effect June 27th. He says the state has already seen a notable decrease in claims for unemployment insurance. Given we're only two weeks into the uptake program, it seems to be working. You know, a bunch of Montanans went back to work. 20% of those who went back to work have already applied for the bonus program. The others have another six months or so to apply for it. Representative Kim Abbott, the Democratic House Minority Leader, says she hopes to see the applications for the bonus program processed more quickly. She's also concerned the steps the state has taken don't address all the issues keeping people out of the workforce. Access to affordable and consistent child care, to a consistent schedule that works for people and their families, and access to affordable housing are three major barriers to workforce development and meeting our workforce needs in the state of Montana. You know, eliminating the enhanced unemployment benefits we thought was a rash decision. The Department of Labor and Industry says they plan to shift resources around to get return to work payments processed faster. They also expect to have updated numbers on the program by the end of this week. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. A mountain lion in West Billings had to be killed for the safety of people living in that area. That lion went up a tree in a neighborhood near 48th Street West. Game wardens and a biologist from Fish, Wildlife and Parks responded. The first sightings of the animal walking in a yard came around four this morning. According to neighbors, it went into at least one tree before walking through another yard to another tree. These are circumstances that occur when it gets hot and dry, especially bears and mountain lions. They're in kind of a desperate need for food and a lot of times they'll end up in really urban areas and in this case right in the middle of a subdivision with a lot of houses around um, which posed a um, considerable public safety risk so unfortunately this time we had to um, put the lion down. Matt Ladd says it's important to keep pets inside at night to keep safe from mountain lions as for bears he says to make sure to put away things with food scents such as barbecues and garbage cans. Well, today, Billings Trailnet received a grant from the Billings REI store to help further the mission of building more trails in Billings. Q2's Branded Warren takes a closer look at how these trails benefit the Billings community. Whether they're dirt, paved, or somewhere in between, it's no secret that Billings has a plethora of trails available for public use. There's lots of different trails out here, which is really cool. It's really like a hidden gem because we've got pretty easy trails and then we kind of have some really difficult trails too but they're really important I mean it's five minutes away from my house it's ten minutes away from where I work it's just cool to have that so close to town and have miles and miles of it too. Although there are plenty of trails in town and others up on the rims the director of Billings Trail Net wants more people to have access to both. And right now we have to load up in our cars to go get up to the rims and then recreate. And what we're trying to do is make it accessible for everybody to recreate, whether they have a car or not. The way they plan to fix this access problem is by building what they call the Stagecoach Trail. This trail would allow foot and bike traffics to and from the rims. The Stagecoach Trail will cost roughly $2 million and does not have a timeline or funding yet. But Billings Trailnet did receive a $5,000 grant from a local REI store to help them get started on this project that they think will bring the community closer. It's something to do with your friends, your family, I mean anybody. I've never had a bad time on a bike. It's uh, just always fun to hop on your bike and just go for a ride with your friends and, and just kind of puts a smile on your face. Billings has trails in over a dozen communities, all of which are free and open to the public. In Billings, Brandon Warren, MTN News. 
A Billings Trail Net is currently selling tickets to its annual Ales for Trails fundraiser. For more information on how to obtain tickets to that, you can visit KTVQ.com. Up next on tonight's MTN 530 News here on Q2, President Biden's choice of Montana and Tracy Stone Manning as BLM director continues to draw a number of critics, including Montana Senator Steve Daines. I'll tell you more about that coming up next. Hi everybody, Scott Breen here. Will we see a Montana Mile record fall at tomorrow's Big Sky State Games opening ceremonies? I'll show you who to watch straight ahead.